You welcome to this news hour on Equinox Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital Douala. My name is Babla Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news on Equinox Television, mining becomes a death trap in the east region of the Republic of Cameroon. Findings indicate that for the past 10 years, close to 100 persons, including children, have died in mining sites in the east region of the country. We'll bring to you details in this newscast and the in other news in this edition of the uh, news on Equinox Television, we will talk about the Ngarbu massacre case that has been adjourned to the 21st of January 2020. This uh, was at the military court today in Yaoundé. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this edition of the News on Equinox Television. After weeks without electric energy supply, it took an injunction from the Division Officer of Mbanga in the Mongo Division Littoral Region of the country for electricity to be restored in several neighborhoods of that part of the Mongo Division in the Littoral Region of the country. And the people took to the streets protesting against inadequate electric energy supply yesterday and brought the divisional officer to the scene who gave an injunction and following that injunction electricity has been restored in quarter one two and three of Mbanga in the Mongo divisions. Manjikan Gebre has more. It was an unusual gathering that was weakness at the premises of the company in charge of producing and distributing electricity energy in Banga, Mongo Division. The inhabitants of quarter one, two, and three were crying out they have been in darkness for several weeks because of what they call a simple fault that could have been corrected by the workers of the company distributing electricity energy. It is from the proceeds that I make in grinding that I put food on my table and without electricity energy, it's difficult for me. Everything in my refrigerator is bad. It is the cold water that I sell that enable me to send my kids to school. Getting the information about the gathering in front of the energy supply company, the division officer of Mbanga, Vo Armstrong, descended to the scene to calm down tempers. After a chat with the divisional manager of the company in charge of producing and supplying electricity energy, he reassured the population. The head of the technical department with whom I just talked with on phone has promised to reinstate energy, so you people should go home and wait. The divisional officer and the divisional manager of the energy supply company both agreed that by midday, Wednesday, things will be settled without which the divisional officer will personally handle the file. Few minutes after dispersing the population, workers of the company were spotted arranging the cable that caused the blackout to these three neighborhoods, respecting the deadline given by the divisional officer of Banga, Vo Armstrong. After the injunction of the Divisional Office of Mbanga in the Mongo Division, littoral region of the country, Vo Armstrong, electricity has been restored. And in the center region, in a similar situation, following the reports of Equinox Television on the bad state of the road linking the nation's political cap, the Yaoundi and Gongmazap, the road has finally been tarred. Uh, we reported some years back the bad state 
indeed of that road in which provoked some kind of hatred from some supporters of the regime against Equinox Television. And now a report has yielded some fruits. The road that was in a very deplorable state is now a tarred highway where vehicles are circulating with little or no difficulties. Details with Innocent Azim. Swift circulation on the Yaoundé Ngomejab Highway through Mbankomo, Ngomu, Olama and others. It all began with a denunciation by Equinox Television some times back when the stretch of roads brought nightmare to its users. I followed the reports on Equinox Television. It was debated upon. We are happy the seasonal roads has today been transformed like this thanks to Equinox Television. At the time of denunciation, fans of the regime baptized Equinox Television with all sorts of evil appellations. But today, this is fruit of the denunciation, beneficial to all. But if users of the close to 100 km roads separating Yaoundé from Gomezap can now enjoy flexible circulation, it is not the case with those who wish curving Gomezap through Mbarmayo and Mengeme. Contractors still have a lot to do. L'état de la route de Mangamé est encore très très trop accidenté. L'état de la route. Il manque seulement les les routes de quartier. Parce que c'est vraiment pas facile. State of this road is very deplorable. We can't circulate in the quarters. Just the quarter roads are problematic. The main roads are okay. Mais le reste ça va. Locals of Ngomejap in the Nyong Eso division of the central region, however, express a sigh of relief and are confident development will move into the quarters in the days ahead. As a result of failure to respect the mining code by mining companies, mining has become a death trap in the east region of the Republic of Cameroon. Close to 100 persons have died in abandoned mining sites in the east region of the country within the past 10 years. Some of the victims were children. Inosunazi has more. Lamentation of a parent who is yet to accept the death of his 12-year-old son, Susten Samba, who on the 13th of September 2017 fell and drowned into an abandoned gold mine in Kambele, a neighborhood in Battery Subdivision, East Region. He left the house at 10 a.m. that fateful day. He went on playing as usual with his friends. We began searching for him when we could not spot him anywhere. He was discovered two days after in the abandoned gold mine, stuck in the mud that reached his waist and water covering him. I budgeted 160,000 francs CFA for divers to get him out, but they denied they cannot die for the task. Other rescuers came and told me to add the money, but I complied because I needed my son's corpse. Three years after the incident, for undertaking suicidal activities on the site, the latter was also convicted for manslaughter as regards death of the 12 years old child. The company has been ordered to pay a fine of 500,000 francs CFA to the bereaved family, as well as damages set at 2 million francs CFA. It is thanks to assistance from a legal team that the poor family could seek justice in court. Our legal team got here thanks to reports by journalists. We will continue raising alarm for justice and mount government authorities pressure such that measures that will oblige mining companies restore size they have exploited are respected. Sadly, the condemnation would not bring back to life the 12 year old Samba whose death has implanted sorrow within the family. It should be recalled, several others were victims of the abandoned sites. 
Il y a plus de 17 non fermés. There are over 17 families in Kambele, Batori, who live near the mining sites with the peas as deep as 12 and 15 meters. It is terrible. How can such peas be abandoned in a village? Vraiment, c'est plus de 12 mètres, 15 mètres. Mais comment on peut garder les choses comme ça Pareil, à côté d'une ville, à côté d'un village. Et les gens passent, ceux qui vont au champ. The Greek Mining Company is subjected to Article 228 of the Cameroon Penal Code governing dangerous activities. This obliges mining companies to work on the earth of a blade. La première disposition, the first legal provision violated by the enterprise is the known restoration of the exploited site. Most of the companies exploit without legal documents. Thus, they operate illegally. Responsibility of the state that has to take appropriate measures to protect citizens by putting an end to dangerous activities, like in this case, invokes a question mark. So because the case of Sosten Samba has not changed anything, because same illegal and dangerous activities are still being carried out in the field. As we speak, same activities continue in Baturi with no security measures, nothing at all. Even the pit in which my son died is still open. Three years after, the activities continue in the watchful eyes and knowledge of authorities. Contacted on phone, the director of mines and the Ministry of Industries refused making any comment without authorization from their boss. However, the incriminated company was suspended except for the fact that the state that could sue the enterprise for carrying out dangerous activities handled the matter lightly and with laxity, leaving many with the notion it operates in complicity with the company. An act that goes contrary to Articles 2 and 9 of the International Convention related to civil and political rights, obliging the government of Cameroon to defend the rights to live and the security of persons. During this week, we got information three persons died in the East region two in the Kete zone and one in the Decarola zone. We wish that authorities take this seriously and call to order enterprises and compel them to cover the peace they have dug and abandoned. According to reliable findings, we are told about 90 children have lost their lives in the past 10 years in these abandoned mines in the localities of Bitare Eya, Gurwa and Baturi in the East region. The legal team that helped Samba's parents seek justice encourages other victims of these dangerous activities to report to courts and claim their rights. In cases where it yields no food, it can as well be presented at the international level based on the international convention related to the civil and political rights as well as the African Charter on Human and People's Rights signed and ratified by Cameroon. The Ngarbu massacre case has been adjourned to the 21st of January 2021, not 2020 as earlier said. It has been adjourned and the hearing took place today at the military court in the nation's political capital. Yaoundé and the, the accused include um, the accused include Baba Gidam, Sanding Sanding Cyril, Haranga uh, Gilbert, Tata for Maxwell alias Bullet, an unidentified member of a vigilante group. The aforementioned persons are all soldiers who were uh, said to have been involved in the Garbo massacre of 14 February 2020 in the 
Donga Mantum Division, Northwest Region of the Republic of Cameroon. The case was adjourned to the 21st of January 2021 for the various libel parties, including the Ministry of Defense, to be served with court summons to appear in court for the list of witnesses to be submitted to the court and communicated to all parties and for the appearance of all accused persons because only three of them were present in court today. All the three who were present today were soldiers. And coming up, a correspondent in the southwest region brings to us updates in the two English-speaking regions of the country hit by socio-political and security tensions for more than four years today. And the prime minister was visiting in the southwest regional chief town Boya on the hills of attacks and uh, killing of traditional rulers, notably of the FACO division. Jetto. The town of Boya is at a standstill, as they dread it in the land of the Bakore people. Both from the windward and the leeward side of the Boya mountain, step forward. Few days ago, one of their traditional rulers was killed. His Majesty Chief Ikomengale Emmanuel was assassinated after abduction last Sunday by a terrorist. And the chiefs of Fako Division are descending to the palace of late Chief Ekomengale of my 14 Tibanda in Boya Subdivision for some rituals. And also partaking in the ride was Honorable Malumba Esembe member of parliament for Buya Oban constituency who begged on the population to always seek but peaceful means in handling issues like this one. We are beggars for peace. We are begging the populations of Buya to contribute at this time by participating actively with the administration and the forces of law and order so that those among us who are spilling blood will be brought to book and we shall all live in peace like we did in the past. I have the merciful hope that this demonstration will incline the hearts of the few who still carry hatred and perpetuate wickedness around. Thank you very much. The next day, the Cameroon Prime Minister and Head of Government came to town and met with the Southwest Chiefs concerning the death of Chief Ekumengale of Mile 14 Tibanda. The Royal Highness. Chief Dr. Joseph John Gute, Cameroon Prime Minister and Head of Government, reiterated on the need for oneness in times like these. The killing of the traditional ruler of Tibanda, Mile 14, calls for general mobilization against evil. However, we should do so as one person. We should do so without giving into the divisive tendency stating that criminals come from one or the other area. Hearts are heavy as FACO division record the death of another traditional ruler in less than two months in an identical circumstances. For me to come now and only start talking about him dying is not good for me. But... And as the Southwest Chiefs converge on FACO Division for condolences, the host president, Chief Ndike Richard, president of the FACO Chiefs Conference, thank his peers and President Paul Bia for the condolence message sent to Cameroon Prime Minister and Head of Government. We thank God for the concern of the Head of State. We sent uh, the Prime Minister to come and condole with the people of Fako for what just happened. Well, we know we are in a situation of war. Uh, it can happen through this way or through that way. I think that the message he brought for us, which is very, very important, is that we should be cautioned for ourselves. Though the pains are too much, but the FACO chief's leader called for courage. I pray that uh, the Almighty God that will accept us, give them the courage, forge ahead of life, 
yes, things like that can happen in life. And uh, if incidents like that do happen in life, we give thanks to God because it is said that uh, whatever thing happens in life, God has a plan for it. Chief Ekomengale was reported dead last Sunday, shortly after he was abducted by separatist fighters. One week to Christmas festivities, markets in the country's economic capital already flooded with gifts and toys for children. Parents have already begun shopping ahead of the Feast of Nativity, even though the Christmas fever is still very timid as a result of the fact that goods are quite expensive on the market. According to some persons that we interviewed today, uh, goods are not very much affordable on the markets this Christmas season. And the traders are putting that or blaming that on the coronavirus pandemic that has gone a long way to destabilize business activities, not only in the country, but across the globe. Immaculate Fogwe has more. A variety of items ranging from toys, shoes, bags, dresses and other festive accessories displayed in the Loom Central Market begging for buyers. Inhabitants recount a gloomy 2020 amid preparation for Christmas and New Year celebrations. Traders at the market lament over poor sales during this festive. Period. Business is really slow. I am unable to sell 1,000 francs a day. Last year, by this time, I was able to sell all my spices. Look at the amount that is left in front of me. Since morning, I have not received any customer. Last year, same time, a lot of women flooded my saloon. 2020 is a failure. COVID-19 has just made life difficult. Housewives, on their part, lament over the rising price of commodities. For me, this Christmas celebration will be below standard. Everything needed to make Christmas fun is expensive. We are unable to eat meat in my house because it is expensive. A cup of rice, which used to be sold for 100 francs, is now sold for 300 francs. I came to the market with 3,000 francs, but I am unable to buy half of the items found on my list. Before, we used to buy 10 bananas for 100 francs. Now, 11 bananas are sold for 200 francs. Another setback faced by traders is a scarcity of coins. The lack of coins has made business be very slow. When customers buy items, we are unable to give them change. Last time we heard that those behind the scarcity of coins were caught, but nothing has changed. We need coins. Majority of them say they do not have the financial means to meet up with the demands of the festivities. And despite the disruptions in socio-economic life provoked by the coronavirus pandemic, parents are still determined, some of them, to ensure that their children celebrate Christmas as they have been doing in previous years before the coronavirus outbreak. And some of them are rushing to the market to get toys and gifts for their children in order to spice up their Christmas season. It was in this report by Kome Charles. In a year plagued by the deadly COVID-19 virus, some parents are still eager to give their kids the best Christmas holidays. Even though the Christmas holiday spending is expected to be muted as the second wave of COVID-19 worsens, causing ongoing economic uncertainty and tighter travel and gathering restrictions. But toy traders say the lack of normalcy in 2020 may be a driver for toy sales because parents will want to do something to keep the Christmas holiday close to normal as possible. 
I have already found what I need to give my children, but the price is really high. We also know that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, prices of goods have been inflated. But we as parents must make our children happy, especially during the festive season. With toy sales expected to get high, retailers have rolled out sales early to keep shopping safe and physically distanced so as to respect barrier measures. They have also released hot toy lists ahead of schedule and are encouraging parents to shop early so as to avoid disappointment. Retailers are also expecting that trend to be stable during the biggest gift season of the year. With all kids, events and school closing, parents have already started compensating their kids, making sure that they will be having fun or entertained during these Christmas holidays. Cameroon is fighting to overturn the devastating effects of the irresponsible use of social media and information and communication technologies. The Minister of Post and Telecommunications speaking at the University of Douala today said that the country recorded at least 11 billion francs losses in the, the cyber in cyber crimes in 2018 and 2019. For me, I'm Stone Sander report. Faced by over a thousand students of the University of Douala, Cameroon's Minister of Post and Telecommunication, Minette Libong Lilikeng, decried the ravaging effects of the social media and the usage of information and telecommunication technology gadgets. Damages that Minette Libong Lilikeng outlines in terms of statistics. The minister says Cameroon recorded more than 6 billion francs CFA financial losses linked to bank fraud in 2019. 20,050 email spams resulting in about 5 billion francs CFE financial loss in the same year. More than 11,000 irregularities recorded on the website of public administrations in the same year and more than 33,000 cases of identity theft in 2018. For the Minister of Post and Telecommunication, it takes more than mobilizing against cyber criminality and school children, pupils and students are some of the government's privileged target in the national campaign against the danger. They, according to Minette Libon Lilikeng, are the main target because they are the most connected on Facebook, WhatsApp and Twitter and often without control through seven ambassadors chosen, including artist San Ziviani, the public authorities want to mobilize the emotional fiber of personalities from various sectors to bring the message of the responsible use of ICTs to the young and old in Cameroon. Still, Cameroon is not yet sufficiently equipped to face hackers, scammers and other types of criminals whose methods are becoming more and more sophisticated every day which explains the current weapon of the government of Cameroon in sensitizing both companies, administrations and civil society actors for a national coalition against cyber crimes, according to the Minister of Post and Telecommunication, Minette Libon Lilikeng. In news out of Cameroon, the governor of Katsina State, Northwest Nigeria, Aminu Belo Masaria, said the gunmen who kidnapped more than 300 school children last week may have got help from the Boko Haram terrorist group. His statement comes after the militant group said it was responsible for the abduction, but Governor Masiri repeated the authorities' view that the attack was carried out by suspected local bandits, and the governor also told the press that the security forces have made contacts with the kidnappers and have some, have some idea of where they are. He said the authorities will not deal with Boko Haram and neither will they agree to paying ransom. 
And still in Nigeria, the COVID-19 figures are rising as speedily. Yesterday, the country confirmed 930 persons tested positive for coronavirus, and that is the highest number President Buhari's country has recorded in a single day. Positive tests from the commercial herb Lagos and the capital Abuja accounted for a lot of the new cases. Nigeria has so far confirmed a total of 75,062 persons tested positive for the coronavirus. The World Food Program has warned that millions of Zimbabweans face hunger in the coming months due to the prolonged drought, economic instability and the effects of COVID-19. In the country, Zimbabwe's government says at least 7.6 million people, that is about half of the country's population, have fallen into poverty this year. Government critics blame the economic crisis on poor policies. It has pushed inflation to its worst level in over a decade. The World Food Program has launched an appeal for $204 million to help cover the costs of feeding 4 million uh, people, 4 million people of the most vulnerable, uh, 4 million of the most vulnerable people over the next six months. Three years of drought and coronavirus restrictions have worsened hunger in the country. The World Food Program representative in Zimbabwe, Francisca Deman, says half of Zimbabwe in the rural areas have been left with no alternative but to skip meals, reduce portion size or sell off precious belongings in order to cope. And that's it for the first part of this newscast. Talking Point is up next. Our guest today joining us from China, the West region of the Republic of Cameroon, is an ICT expert, Wilfin Wilson Joffrey, is the CEO of FedWorks Tech and AfriTech Academy. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mr. Babina. Right, in the, uh, one of the reports aired in this newscast, we're talking about mm, the problem of cyber criminality, irresponsible use of social media and information and communication technologies, and the government indicates that billions of France EV have uh, been lost in cyber crimes, irresponsible use of information and communication technologies. What analysis of all of these? I will appreciate the effort uh, made by the government now, even though coming a little late, but it's better to combat this issue because since the internet became so much in use by many people, the government has been very slow to first of all tackle, use the online means to better the country, but we, we, we are glad that they are coming in with this effort. We, and we know the, there has been a lot of irresponsible use, sharing of fake news, uh, abuse and a lot of negative things uh, scamming going on but we hope the government will intensify efforts to fight this while the fight against cyber crime is going on uh, the ear seems to be growing in intensity as the years go by fake news is almost everywhere on social media today and scamming is going on many other ears happening on the internet today. Why is it that is difficult to control, is difficult to uh, break the neck of this eel, so to speak? I think the, the government uh, and many other private companies need, need to intensify their efforts in getting the appropriate experts on board. Because most of the time, these uh, cyber uh, criminals are very expert. They have expert knowledge before they can crack into systems all systems including those of banks and it needs experts who are more advanced in knowledge and expertise than them to be able to tackle them so private companies as well as the government should begin to seek to form uh, bodies made up of highly skilled uh, cyber experts who will be able to have higher level of knowledge to be able to combat this all right now let's talk about the impact of the digital media in combating covid 19 an asset liability um, I would say it has been mixed 
both an asset and a liability because we know since the breakout of the COVID-19 pandemic, it took the digital med media, including TV, social media, and the rest of the internet to be able to spread the information, see what was happening in other countries, and be able to respond. And you know, even when schools were shut down earlier this year, you know, it was thanks to the TV media and the internet that uh, some children, even though not most of them, were able to receive uh, courses. But on the flip side of it, you see that there was a lot of uh, panic that was created by the media because fake news, like we earlier said, uh, a lot of people were making others to panic, just saying things that do not exist, and misinformation caused a lot of people to panic. Mm -hmm. uh, so that just Especially on social media. Yes, you know, uh, everybody on social media now can write anything in just minutes and publish, which is a big uh, of a problem. So we need to get in the system where information, reliable sources of information should be become more available so that we avoid this use of social media where everybody, and also people should also be checked. That is fake news should be checked. Mm. And on, on social media, it's going very fast and very speedily and information, just a click, it is everywhere. And uh, this irresponsible use of social uh, media is beginning to uh, cause some major problems, like hate speech that you were talking about. Most of uh, the, the propagation, much of the propagation is on the social media. How should people um, avoid this? Um, Normal social media users. I think, first of all, uh, our government should get into kind of like partnerships with uh, various uh, social media companies and be able to track some kind of keywords or some kind of information. When it is shared, uh, the, the, the social media platform should be able to flag it or give people the opportunity to mark this kind of information as being uh, fake. And also people should be sensitized because sensitization is the main thing. People should be sensitized on uh, using official sites like uh, news media sites, uh, government sites, uh, or reliable companies sites to get information. Otherwise, uh, I, I think this, uh, uh, this thing is going to keep going higher. It's going to keep going higher. And the impact is uh, quite significant, not only on COVID-19, but on life in the society in general, when we start talking about fake news and hate speech. Um, you know, uh, hate speech has caused a lot of crisis. Uh, fake news has caught, caused a lot of damage, uh, both economically, socially, politically, and in all means. So this issue should be tackled uh, by both uh, individuals and the government alike, and really treated as a matter of an emergency. Uh, like I, I said, sensitization should take the stage to, to be able to curb uh, this face, fake news and misinformation. Sensitization. But many of the people who are uh, using social media irresponsibly, some of them are aware of the, uh, the laws existing. Some of them are aware of the danger of spreading fake news or false news and so on. But they still go on with, uh, with this. So how to uh, bring those kind of people to stop and use social media in a responsible manner? Well, I believe any law that is in place put by the nation should be respected. And then this sensitization should sensitize people of each law. When you do this, this is, these are the repercussions. Once it's proven that you have done this, this is the repercussion that you face. The law should be explained to the people in a simple language. And then that is when you'll be able to keep hold people accountable. I mean, people are guilty of this accountable. So I still go back to the point of uh, sensitization by both the government, the media houses, and all other others who, who, who have this uh, opportunity to access the people. Right. And then uh, when the people are sensitized and they still don't respect, sanctions should follow. Well, I believe the law should be applied because I believe the law is put in place by the nation. And when all other means are failed, the law should be respected. The law should be respected. In your opinion, how should this sensitization be done? Door to door, seminars, workshops? A combination of all those. 
And I will say media houses, including Equinox Television, just like you've been doing, should be more engaged, add more effort to this, because it's true this action, using all means available to sensitize people, will be able to, to, to get it. We have banners, we can put banners, and I'm very happy that the government put a, co a commission of, uh, for cyber security made up of some experts, which was really a great thing. So this is just the start. We, we, we pray that more of such efforts should be put. More of such efforts should be put in in order to curb uh, cyber crime. And talking about COVID-19 in particular, how should uh, it be handled on social media by whosoever? has information on COVID-19, communication on COVID-19. How should it be harnessed in such a way that it does not uh, become more or less a problem to society instead of being a solution? I want to talk to everyone who is listening to this. Please verify your information before you publish. Because once you, pub you, you, you forward anything that is not verified, you become the author. So the best way is to go to official sites, go to government sites or uh, agencies that have been approved to get your information. Don't just take things from everywhere and begin to forward them. It will lead to misinformation. Getting information for very reliable sources, reliable sites, is the best means of being able to, to, to handle this. All right, verifying information before forwarding, before sharing, before liking, uh, and whatever. And, exactly. And, and this will help us to mitigate uh, the impact of fake news and uh, other ills on the social media and of course ills related to the irresponsible use of information and communication technologies. Exactly. Wilson Joffrey, ICT experts, CEO of FedWorks Tech and AfriTech Academy. Thank you for coming. Thank you Mr. Babina. Thanks ladies and gentlemen for staying with us. That's it for today. Thank you.